Welcome to Let's Talk About It, a podcast that gets a platform for real talk, real people, real topics, real conversations. Enjoy the show and enjoy this journey. Welcome everybody to Let's Talk About It, a podcast that gets a platform for real talk, real people, real topics, real conversations. Today, my guest, I had to, I had to write this down because you guys, you guys gonna love this. She is a mom of four. She's a wife. She says she's your gym height girl. <laughs> She empowers women to weightlift and shows, in her opinion, how to lose fat and build muscle. Okay, now there's a lot of women out there, a lot of men out there who has kids and they try to figure out like, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I got to do this. I got to do that. Guess what? My guest today, is, in her opinion, is going to let you know how it is. Today, I'd like to introduce Kendra Larson. Kendra, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. First and foremost, how's your Saturday going so far? Oh, everything's everything's good. We've been kind of busy. I already hit the gym this morning, which is nice, and just knocking out a couple of things, a couple of errands, but we're doing well. Oh, man. I, I, I had to go to work early this morning for some dumb safety training, but that's a whole double thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to hear that. That's it's not a fun right. way to spend your Saturday. <laughs> exactly, right? But at, the, at this interview, I'm, I'm going to do my own home workout and get it in. That's so great. before I start, what you work on today? What did I work on today? Today I did legs. It was all lower body. So trying to get in and out of the car afterwards was pretty hard, but <laughs> that means it was a good workout if I exerted <laughs> myself. Well, tomorrow's my leg day. Uh, today I'm gonna do chest and arms, but let's get to you. All okay. right. If you don't mind, tell us a little bit about Kendra. Sure, sure. So, like you said in your introduction already, I'm I'm a mom of four. I'm 35 years old. I've been married for about 15 years, and I live in San Antonio, Texas. I'm a Texan through and through. Right. And so I was born and raised here. I love Southern hospitality. I love warm weather. I've kind of traveled all over the country um, for my husband's career, but we're here to stay for the most part. I have four kids, ages 12, 10, eight, and five. And I was working part-time in marketing and I still do a little bit of freelance of that as well still, but I've been able to dial back a little bit, especially with summer coming up and my kids are all going to be out of school and home with me all the time. So it gets a little more hectic, but that's pretty much me. I, I love movies. I love binge watching on Netflix and I love interior decorating. Anything that has anything to do with styling and decorating. That's, those are my hobbies along with working out, obviously. I love it. I love it. We go deep dive into that because you know, like you said, you're, you're a mom of four. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, uh, it, it also, guys, like, I'm going to post her Instagram after this right now. She goes, she's very good with her content. I, I, that, this is why I had to have her on. You know, let's get down to it. Now, on your page, you know, you wrote how way you lost 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you start your journey of, of, of losing 70 pounds? Of? Like, mm -hmm. you can get into that. Sure, sure. Do you mind if I share a little bit of backstory before sure, that? Sure, go right ahead. Okay. The platform's yours. Okay, great. So first off, I I was never overweight until I had, a, I, it was probably my third or fourth child. Okay. And so just for background story of like, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to normalize. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. I want to normalize that it's we go through phases of life, especially as women or as parents in general. There's all these different seasons and phases. So whether someone's struggling with weight gain their entire life or it was a really short period of time. And in my my journey, it was a short period of time where I gained a lot of weight. And, and that wasn't. Um, something that I was necessarily used to. I wasn't an athlete before. I always did like student council and and that kind of stuff 
growing up, I loved um, the creative aspect of things. So I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't necessarily, um, I, I never weight lifted. I never weight lifted, but I wasn't overweight. And then after I had my fourth kid, I went through a, a really bad season of life, a bad three years of, um, it was during my husband's medical residency. So he was working and gone about 80 hours a week. And we had all of our kids that I was taking care of. I had gotten pregnant and I, in order to try and help just pay the bills, I took a job where I was getting up at two in the morning and I would work from two in the morning until 7 a.m. teaching English online to children in China. And so because of the hour difference, that's the time that we had work. And back then, I Californian child care was like an atrocious amount of money. So that was the most reasonable job for me to work during the night hours so that we didn't have to pay for child care and to help pay the bills. And so that just that time of life was really, really mm -hmm. hard. My husband being gone, me getting about five hours of sleep at night and just exerting myself in every possible way. And I went through kind of a deep depression, especially after I had my fourth kid going through that postpartum, a little bit of postpartum depression. And so I gained a bunch of weight from that, just having a just an unhealthy lifestyle in pretty much every aspect of my life. And so I gained a bunch of weight. I gained about 60 pounds with during my pregnancy. And then I had my son and the weight never came off. And I was nursing him. I nursed him for about a year and a half. And I think I just got into the habit of eating for two and not taking care of myself, not sleeping well, not taking care of of myself and trying to get that energy that I needed to have. Um, so fast forward, that's that's kind of how it is. And I just feel like so many times, especially as women, we we beat ourselves up because we're having we feel like we have to put our kids first and in order to put them first we have to take a back seat of our health and we have to um, kind of put ourselves last in a way and so once i was able to get out of that unhealthy phase of life and my husband finished his residency he got a job with a private practice and life was able to calm down a little bit um, i was still working and i still had my four kids so it's not like stress and life became easy. It wasn't necessarily easy by any means, but I realized that in order for me to keep up with my kids and have the energy that I needed, I had to prioritize myself a little bit higher than where I was. And so that's what started the whole journey was trying to find ways to have energy basically is what I wanted in my life was to have the capacity and the strength to just keep up with a house of four children <laughs> so that it was a lot it was and that was the motivation that was a big motivating factor was trying to get that energy back wow that is amazing first <laughs> and foremost i gotta ask you what was what was the time difference between there and china oh i i don't remember but i remember it was i would start at three and i want to say that was like around five or five o'clock. This was back in 2017, 2018. So I could be completely off on my time difference, but it was the evening. So it was after the kids were out of school, they would do English lessons. But because of Beijing's time and my California time, I had to be up super, super early. So, so, so at the time you had all four kids, right? Am I still I lost there? You for a second. Okay. Yeah, I lost you for a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Go ahead. No, you're fine. And so I, I had three kids at the time. I would get up at two o'clock in the morning and I would teach from 2 30 until 7. And then I would take my older two kids to school, stay home with my toddler, and just run until she had a nap. And that was probably around one o'clock. So I would be up from 2 a.m. until about one o'clock. Then I would try and nap with her. And then she would get up from her nap. I would pick up the other two kids and then just endure the rest of the night. <laughs> and sometimes my husband wouldn't come home till 
for like a, if he was on call he wouldn't come home for a couple of days at a time and so it was just running ragged it, it was so unhealthy looking back now but you do what you have to do this journey is starting off good here i, I, I like this. <laughs> Wow. Okay. All you got to right. share the uh, ugly to like appreciate the good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when you started this uh, this journey, like you know, we, you you wanted to lose weight and have more energy to, to, to mm -hmm. keep up with your kids. Like, what are some of the things that that you did? Uh, that's a great question. So I was never a cardio person. My I know people that will just go and run for four miles at a time. That sounds like torture to me. And I'm I'm still not a cardio person. <laughs> and so yeah, what's wow. what started for me was another life instance. You know, life just happens and reminds you that you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. My dad got sick with COVID. And so this I feel like I'm sharing so so many deep things. My life isn't that traumatizing, but no, <laughs> there, so there had to be these big moments to force me to make life changes. And mm -hmm. so this was another big moment. It was in 2021, January. My dad got COVID and he had to be hospitalized for three weeks with COVID pneumonia. They weren't expecting him to live. And we were one of the very lucky ones. To where i do still have my dad now he survived but during the time that three week period it was just it we had no idea what was going to happen and i am the executor of the state for my parents and so my mom just kind of shut down because she was struggling with my dad possibly passing away in the hospital and at that time they still weren't allowing anyone in the hospital so we had to call every 12 hours when the nurse shift change happened to get an update on my dad and to figure out how he was doing how much oxygen he was on what what his lungs were looking at um and so to kind of up um take the load off of my mom my brothers and i have three brothers we were all staying at my mom's house we were all taking turns like monitoring her phone because everyone was asking about my dad and the stress was just too much to her and so we were all trying to offload that i'm sorry my dog is hey. <laughs> We love dogs. Right. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> and so he, um, so my dad was sick during this three week time period. My brothers and I were trying to make sure that life insurance was all in order, everything was in place in case my dad did pass away and still take care of my mom during all of this. And the stress got to me, it, it was, it was too much. So we would wait up till about 11 o'clock at night every night to make that phone call to the nurse's station to get an update on my dad. And while we were all waiting, we would play card games, try and just distract ourselves and distract my mom. And for me, I just, it, the stress was building up so much trying to prepare for my dad's passing, but still comfort my mom at the time. So I would walk on the treadmill when we were waiting to stay up to um, make that phone call to my nurse's station. So I would just be on the treadmill and I would just walk while we're all like gathering and playing games and trying to distract my mom. And I would just go on the treadmill and I learned ironically, hey, exercise actually relieves stress. That's crazy. Everyone talks about it, but <laughs> I had to like learn for myself. This is actually helping. Awesome. And so I started to walk on the treadmill and then my dad got released from the hospital and he's well and good now. But af shortly after that, I found a group on for kickboxing and had always thought that sounded fun. That sounded like a fun thing to try. And so I bought the group on and I convinced my two sisters in law to come with me because I was too scared to go by myself. I didn't, I knew I would look like an idiot and it would be totally out of my comfort zone. And I went and I, fell in love with it. It's at a gym called CKO and they are a franchise. So they have multiple locations throughout the country, but it was the hardest mm -hmm. cardio workout I had ever done, mm -hmm. but it was so much fun. And I learned from that, that cardio could be fun. And I had learned from walking on the treadmill that exercise relieves stress. So if I can find a way 
to combine the two to find an exercise that relieved stress, but also was enjoyable because I hated running and you like couldn't pay me to run a marathon. Me either. No way, no way. And I would just die on the side of the road. <laughs> but I found kickboxing was, it was so therapeutic for me. It's like a lot of aggression coming out. You're able to get your heart rate up and you have these high impact and high intensity workouts, but you're still having a great time. The community was amazing. The people were so supportive and encouraging, even though I had no experience whatsoever. The coaches were just fantastic. So I ended up buying a membership and that was three years ago and I still go every week now and I love it. And it's still the same, same cart. And that's my cardio because I still hate running. So yeah, I don't <laughs> that's, run. that's what started it though. That was, was just walking on the treadmill to relieve stress okay. and then finding a cardio that I truly genuinely enjoyed doing. And that's, that's what just kind of catapulted my entire exercise and wellness journey. So, 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 so when you, we, we started the, that part with the cardio and the kickboxing, like, so when did you start going to the gym with the weights? Yeah. So that was, that was, everything was progressional for me. Okay. So I, I had to start with that, just start with the walking and realizing that relieves stress. And then, I started with kickboxing and found, oh, cardio can be fun. And then they offer a class at that same gym, the kickboxing gym, that was strength and conditioning. So that was my first introduction to weightlifting. And it was very basic, though, because it is a kick, kickboxing gym. And so you just do mostly kettlebell and dumbbell work and nothing with like barbells or anything like that. So that was the first introduction to me was oh, okay, this is strength and this is muscle building that helps with the kickboxing. It complements the two. And so that was kind of a general introduction. And then I realized that I I want that toned body physique look. Yeah. I had never had that. Again, I wasn't an athlete. I never weight lifted. I was just healthy, but I wasn't toned and had muscle definition. And I remember there's this one question. Thing. I'm gonna oh, yeah. cut you off. Yeah, yeah. So at this time, you're starting kickboxing, you're doing the uh, strength and conditioning. Now, mm -hmm. also at the same time, you got four kids at home. So yeah. how did you like how was the what was the beginning part of balancing that mm -hmm. out? Yeah, that that's a great question. I the kickboxing classes are only offered in the evening. So that was pure support from my husband. Um I they don't offer childcare at that gym and so I would go in the evening. I would work during the day and then I would go in the evening to one class and I started out maybe twice a week, maybe three times at the most. Okay. I would go three to three classes per week. And we did have a treadmill at home. So I would walk on the treadmill just to help get steps in each day. And so I was probably exercising three to five times a week around that time. Okay. But the kickboxing was two to three times. And that was in the evening because I was working full time at that time. I was working all day. Sometimes it would be remote at home, but for the most part I was going into the office. And so my kids would be in school, I would work, and then I would go to kickboxing on the evenings that my husband was home. So if he wasn't home, I couldn't I couldn't go and I would just walk on the treadmill. If he was home, then I would go to a kickboxing class in the evening. I you know what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I have a good support system. <laughs> I think it is better. And that's all I was going to tell you. Like, first and foremost, you know, tell your husband right, <laughs> yeah. here, right here, my man. So when you see this, yeah. I'm giving you a clap. Yes. You know, being supportive to each mm -hmm. other. You know, mm -hmm. we have kids or relationship or, mm -hmm. you know, a career journey. You know, it, that is so key in relationships right. today, communication. It is. Like, so when you was going through this, like, what, what, like if, if you feel comfortable, what was the in-depth 
conversations like with, with you two like like okay we go plan this right here i'm gonna do this right here you can go here i got this right here right yes <laughs> it is tag team a hundred thousand percent and and i i really don't think i could do it without my husband not the kickboxing classes because they didn't have child care yeah. so i i feel like if i didn't have that support system at home I, I wouldn't have been able to attend those classes. And still, I mean, my daughter's a little bit older now, so sometimes I'll leave her with the younger ones because yeah. she's 12 now and she can babysit. But at the time when they were younger, I, I didn't feel comfortable leaving them at home. So my husband was full support. He realized, he saw how much it affected me and my stress levels and my happiness. When mom's happy, everyone's happy. So it's... He knew how much it affected the household and it affected yeah. me and his, I mean, if we didn't have that, that mutual respect and love for each other and support one another, it, it wouldn't be as near as effective as it could be because you have to have that support system, whether it's parents and, and I feel for single moms, I want to be sensitive towards them, especially with, with trying to navigate a job and kids and not having a partner with you in that aspect that that's hard it really is challenging because you have to have that support system so whether that you can get that from friends or from parents or someone else where you can shift and like switch trading off kids and watching them so that you can attend a class then you do what you have to do but i am fortunate enough to have my husband that was fully supportive of it he saw how much it made me happy and how much stress was released from that. Wow. And so he encouraged me to go as often as I could. And he still does. He doesn't ever make me feel bad about it or anything like that. He, he wouldn't. So it's, wow. it's very wow. I'm fortunate for that. <laughs> Kendra, but before I get to my next question, you married a man. I'm just letting you know that right now. <laughs> not, that, that's, that's a, that's a grown ass man right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, there you go. He's, Again, he's a good man, one. Yeah, he's a good no, one. <laughs> seriously. You will love now, seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> as you're going through kickboxing and strength and conditioning, like what was your nutrition like at this time? I still hadn't started my nutrition because food, oh, okay. food is a hard thing for me. I, I will be upfront and honest about that. I love food. I am from the South. I love all the good fatty food. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like Me if too. I if I could eat Chick Fil A every day, I would eat Chick Fil A every day. Like I love my fajitas and my Mexican food. I love pastas and cream sauces and all of that stuff. And so having that, and that that also was a huge part of my weight gain. I I was drinking Dr Pepper like every day. I was. No, that <laughs> that was my favorite soda right there. <laughs> I drank that no. for years and years and yes. years. Yeah, but it, I, I needed cut soda it. Out. Yeah, I I have too. <laughs> so I realized, and I was drinking it because I I felt like the caffeine and the sugar, like it would help keep me awake during the day. Because no, it, it tastes was, good. Come on, I, and it tastes, it tastes delicious. Good. Oh, it tastes delicious. Go. If you ever make it to Texas, there's a Dr Pepper Museum here <laughs> in Waco oh. that you oh. can go to and get the real sugar cane Dr Pepper. It's really good. Uh, I, I can't. I gave up soda <laughs> a year over a year ago. I'm not uh, going back. I can't. But go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. So I I was drinking that like every day, just trying to keep myself energized i i would medicate that that's another good point to bring up again my sweet husband i remember having this conversation with him during residency and this was after i had my fourth kid and again i was sleep deprived not taking care of myself i remember telling him i feel so tired and so exhausted and he said well everyone in america is exhausted and tired we just all medicate differently. And he said, we either medicate with caffeine, with energy drinks, five hour energy, um, med any kind of soda that has caffeine, coffee, any of this stuff, we medicate with caffeine or we exercise. And he said, that's just how it is. Our society is overbooked. We're all exhausted. We're all over scheduled and expended and we're all busy, so we're all tired. We just medicate differently, and it's either with caffeine or with exercise. 
And I remember that hitting me so hard. And that was a huge, like a kind of awakening up moment for me because I had been trying to medicate with like Dr. Pepper and drinking that every day because I was so tired instead of exercising and trying to use that as a natural endorphins and an energy builder and sustainability. And so I had it switched. And so that was a huge, huge pivotal moment for me was making that connection, that realization that you don't have to rely on caffeine to give you energy. You could actually do it in a more natural and healthy way through exercising and get so many more benefits from exercising than you would through caffeine. So that that was a big awakening moment for me as well. But fast forward to after I had started kickboxing and walking on the treadmill and I was just starting to introduce strength and conditioning. And that piqued my interest because I wanted that physique. I wanted a toned muscular look to my body. And I realized you can only achieve that through weightlifting, obviously. <laughs> and so, yeah. so once I started just kind of explore, I just started to like play with the idea of weightlifting and strength training because it was intimidating. It really, it terrified me. I'd never lifted weights. I would barely go on like the machines that never free weights or anything like that. I'm like, I don't belong there. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never lifted weights. So I, that's not me. That's, that's not my, my kind of thing. I'm not comfortable there. Gotcha. So once, once I started to study it and just kind of research it, I learned that weightlifting can actually help you burn fat because you're building muscle the muscle actually requires more energy, more calories during your day to just keep that muscle. And so that was a huge pro to me. And I'm like, okay, well, if weightlifting can give me that toned physique that I want, yeah. but it can also help burn extra fat because I, I was losing weight, but I wasn't, I, I was just so overweight. So it's like you're, you're trying to lose that fat, but you still have to build the muscle to have that toned physique and not Absolutely. just slim down. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, okay, well, if I start weightlifting, then I'm going to need to really like monitor protein intake and macros and all of that stuff because mm -hmm. if I'm going to want to shed fat and build muscle then I have to watch what I'm eating. And I did have to save that for the end. It had to be very progressional, like I said earlier, of taking a little bit at a time, first starting with cardio and then starting with weightlifting and then cleaning up my nutrition. Because I do believe in the past when I had tried to like lose weight, it was so overwhelming because it was so much change all at once. Yeah, it's it's a lot to have to yeah. like shift a whole lifestyle. So I actually am a huge believer in doing these micro steps and getting down certain habits and then building on top of them. There's a book called Atomic Habits that talks all about this by James Clear. And it's it's fantastic. I highly recommend this book. And he talks about how you have to just do one percent changes and stack that so you're stacking these habits and these different changes that you're making awesome. so over time you can look back and see this huge significant change but it was all done in little incremental steps really? yeah it's it's a fantastic book so for yeah. me that had to happen because i had to change i first had to get in the habit of exercising in general i hadn't been doing that i had been medicating with soda Dr. <laughs> yeah, with my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and so, so I had to make these changes and do this shift in order just to get to the habit of exercising regularly. Okay. And then once I took it more seriously because I wanted a certain physique, mm -hmm. then I realized, okay, I have to clean up my nutrition then that, and that had to come last because that was going to be the hardest hardest part for me. And it was, it, it still is. It's still is something that I have to just monitor and, and make conscientious habits. Exercising, like I love it. I look forward to it every day mm -hmm. is something that is just second nature to me because I yeah. spent probably about, I spent about six months just getting in the habit of exercising before I started implementing nutrition. 
I didn't change my diet at all. I, I may have laid off the Dr. Pepper a little bit more <laughs> because I was just, yeah, just a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> not a lot, <laughs> just a little bit so that I could just, cause I was getting the energy from exercising. So I didn't yeah. feel the need to medicate with caffeine as much. Yeah. And so I laid off soda a little bit and just drank more water, but I still ate the same. I, I didn't change any eating habits until about six months into my journey because I needed to focus on that one big change and that that is a big change if you go from not exercising regularly to exercising five yes. days a week that's a lot that that's a hard change to make that's a lifestyle change can't stop you gotta keep on going yeah exactly and so once i was able to get that down then i felt like i was ready for the next step and that was weightlifting and then the next step after that was cleaning up my nutrition okay now one thing here when you first went into the gym, okay, like a lot of females say this a lot, they feel so uncomfortable. But was yes. that you in the very beginning? Absolutely, a hundred thousand percent. Afraid of being judged or looked at yes. or whatever. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. how'd you overcome that? Because I hear this all the time. Yeah, gym anxiety is it's a real thing, and I've I've talked to my mom about it even of like inviting her to the gym and she's like i would feel so dumb being there i'm like i i get it that was me i the first time i was there i was like scanning the qr codes on those machines to like make sure i was using the machine right because i i didn't know even how to use the machines that are in the middle so i had to start with that too i had to start with just the machines okay and then once i felt a little bit more brave and more comfortable it's like okay well all venture out to the free weights but even the smith machine that was like the most intimidating thing to me and i stood there i remember youtubing how to use a smith machine right then and there because i was like i don't even know like what to do with this <laughs> i see people use it i don't really know how to use it and i don't know what the proper thing is with it so i youtubed and watched a youtube video of how to use a smith machine and that was it was really helpful for me now it's one of my favorite machines that i use and i use it all the time so <laughs> i i was a like deer in the headlights had no idea what i was doing had no clue how to do things or or what proper form was but i went and and just showing up consistently made me feel like I would one day I will get comfortable with this and I will feel like I belong here. And I can notice people now because I've I've been weightlifting for about two and a half years. It'll be like three years this summer. And I can notice people and I, I recognize that face of like just feeling so uncomfortable being there. And I think one of the greatest ways to get over it is just kind of channel your inner confidence and say, I do belong here because I am trying to work on myself. And everyone started at zero. Nobody is born weightlifting. Nobody knows what they're doing the first time they get into a gym. Absolutely. Everybody starts at zero. Everyone, even right. Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the great bodybuilders had to start at zero. Everyone. Can, can, let me tell you something. When I started, I was fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse my French. I was there. Oh, no. That and I did too. it for the wrong reasons. Uh -huh. I did it because I wanted to look different because I was, uh, you know, I was living in Colorado at the time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to date. So I went on dates and the females I was me, they want the big muscle guy. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the big muscles, the muscles. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I said, I'm never going to be that way. I'm, I'm a lean. Guy. I'm lean muscle. So right. I'm, up, I'm up in the gym. Like you probably seen the guys at the gym. Mm -hmm. oh, over like over hyping himself right lifting yes uh -huh. that was me that was my dumb ass i did all that stuff until i had to get out of there but i'm sorry i'm sorry go ahead no I, you're I, fine. I had to add that in there there is like it's it's funny like because people will be in there for completely different reasons yes. and and people will be in there and for me though i i feel like it's easy for me to not judge because 
we don't know why they're there and at least they're there because that was me for a long time was yeah i probably looked like a complete idiot and a moron and i had the worst form and was lifting little tiny baby weights but i was there and i was i was doing something and even if i see people now that may not have proper form i'm like good for them for being here they're here and they are trying and you're making an effort and i think that is something that can have so much grace and and room for error in the gym because at least people are there they're showing up they're trying and and that was me i everyone has to go through this learning curve of having proper technique and having proper form and yes. rest time but that all of that comes with time and i yes. think if people are just now starting out they have to get comfortable with just being there in the gym and feeling like they belong and One once question. they're able to get oh yeah go ahead so at this time right you're starting your journey off you got brave you went to the gym you're learning how you, you're doing the qr codes your <laughs> youtube and everything mm -hmm. you got four kids at home and you have to be a wife as well mm -hmm. so what was your mental like at this whole journey in time? Like, how was you mentally like going through all this process? Mm -hmm. I I think I realized, even though I didn't look a way that I wanted to look, I felt good. I felt good. healthier being there. And I felt the stress release because I would go on the days when I wasn't working in the office, I would drop off my youngest in childcare, and i had three that were in school at the time during the school year at least in the summer they all come um and so i i knew that that was my two hours where i could just forget everything else and whether i looked like i belonged there or not yeah and i didn't i didn't look like i belonged there but i knew how much it impacted my mental health and it made me happier and it made me less stressed. Love and it. so I was able to just, I, I don't care. I couldn't care what people may have thought of me or whether or not I looked like I belonged there. I was doing it because it made me feel better and it made me a, a healthier mom. It made me a healthier wife because I was able to relieve stress. Even if I didn't have a physique that I liked or I wasn't toned or I wasn't lifting heavy, it made me feel better being there. And I, I think that's really hard to get to that point. Yeah. And again, that's something that just takes time. But for people to get to the point where they don't care what they look like, they just care of how it makes them feel. And kind that, of stuff. That's, that's tough. That is it's tough. Hard. I, I don't care so much anymore, but sometimes you get those days you walk by the mirror. You're like, and I think <laughs> I think men get it just as much as women do yeah, too. Like is yes. because men are also comparing themselves, whether they admit it or not. They're comparing testosterone. Kendra is testosterone. Yes, it is. I have three it's brothers, so I'm like <laughs> familiar with all of that. They all played hey. football. They all cared about how they looked and how much they bench pressed and all of that. Oh yeah, but, it's just, you got guys yeah. out there. They're just working on the upper half, right? And they got they got damn chicken legs on the bottom. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. They got, they got had the big muscle shirts and the guy had the big exactly. muscles and all this shit. I'm exactly. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's and it is something that men and women both struggle with. And and comparing yourself and comparing yourself to other people and to who you used to be. You know, you I used to bench press this in high school and things like that. It's, oh. it's such a comparison game. And that is hard. That is really, really hard to overcome and to move past is trying to just be there for how it makes you feel. And I think once that takes precedent, then everything else falls into place. Okay, so when you got down to your, I guess what, comfortable way and you got to start getting into your routine this and that what what made you come up with the idea of doing content mm -hmm. like to help people you know lose fat and build muscle what what i don't know if i'm going too far but like you know i, I just want to know what what made you say okay i'm doing me now i'm getting the right technique in i youtube everything i'm ready mm -hmm. to go 
uh, you know, I'm going to help out other people. Like, right? mm-hmm. so what made what what got you to that point where you're like, I'm gonna do content and help out other people? Sure, sure. So, I that was another thing where I felt like I was able to be not an example. I will admit, I still don't have a perfect body. I never will. I I won't. I just have scars. I have loose skin. I don't have breast implants. Like I, I don't have the perfect ideal body that women and, and social media and society portray oh. women to have. Like oh. that's a whole other topic that we uh, could go into. Listen, that. Listen, I, I may cut you off, but like, <laughs> it's funny. Go for it. <laughs> you, you let it out and I'll let it out too. <laughs> you got, this is men and women. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially the guys, you know, they, they got the shirts off. They all cut. They all eat, eating grass outside. Uh-huh. Uh, slim waist, waist, all right, that the females and you know, a bunch of makeup on and uh-huh. this and that, whatever. So, I'm looking, you, you know, you scroll through Instagram, you see all these people, right? You walk up to a gym, I don't see none of these motherfuckers anywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it rant, but yeah, I, I just and they tell you that okay, you do this, you can look like this, you can do look uh-huh. like this. It takes years to do this. Oh yeah, and, mm-hmm. and people get sucked into that, and then they have all these programs. You know, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to take it too far. I'm sorry, this is your platform. No, I'm not no going you're, by. you're fine because I, I could go off about this for a long time. Too. <laughs> just, but like, just, just, just give me a short, short version how what you feel about that. I, I feel like social media, and this is partially why I took a break from social media because I felt like I was getting pulled into that to this black hole of perfection and what society expects the female body to look like because you have these fitness influencers on Instagram that have these insane bodies and there's there is great content and very authentic realistic people out there who do make authentic content and talk about this of like how a shredded body isn't a year-round body that's not something that is sustainable it doesn't that's not healthy to constantly be in a caloric deficit and to be that shredded all the time it's you're not able to build muscle that way yeah. and so there there are some people who do address this authentically and realistically which i think is so necessary because women and men will get caught up in this idealistic of what a perfect shredded body looks like and that that is sustainable year long four years and decades when it's not in reality, that's not, that's like physically impossible to build muscle that way. And so having that circulating online for people to compare themselves to, I think is so unhealthy. <laughs> and and it's, it's really, really hard to like not get caught up into that. Even me, someone who has been on a, a successful journey I can still compare myself to like, well, I'm I'm never going to look like that because I have loose skin from being overweight and I have stretch marks from having four pregnancies. And mm-hmm. I, I have all of these flaws and imperfections, but still being able to feel confident and feel healthy and and happy with how your body looks and feels that that is something that I honestly think has to be worked on for the rest of our lives. That's just that's a constant battle because we're so bombarded in society by perfection and idealistic, unrealistic expectations. And so that that's just something that is going to have to be like a lifelong endeavor. And and it ebbs and flows. It comes and goes. There's there's times when I'm like, oh, I, I feel great about myself, feel great. And then there's times where I'm like, oh, I wish I could change this about my body or I could change this about me. And everyone, I think, deals with that. It's just how how deep it goes and how much they fixate on that or how often it comes about. But I think finding that balance of wanting to improve, but not dwelling on flaws and imperfections because nobody is perfect no one's no. going to have that no. not no. not sustainably not for the rest of their lives oh absolutely nope. but your but but your content you know i i want you to get more into your content because you know it's 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 really good and, and, and like mm-hmm. i said i'm gonna tag on and put you on there 
And people, you gotta check out her content. I really think it's good. She actually explains it very, very well. So you put your content out there, you're doing a great job, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna know what inspired you? And I don't know how you go feel about this, to put your before and after pictures that, that you put on your content. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I'll be completely honest. Of, of That's hard. That, that took a while for me to get comfortable to that because I wasn't always that person. I wasn't always overweight. That was three year time span, which is so small in comparison to my life. That was a small period of life where I gained a ton of weight and I was really, really unhealthy. And I still feel like guilt and shame by that occasionally. It's not as often mm -hmm. when I do, I try not to dwell on it, but I'm human. Yes. So sometimes I'll look back at those pictures and be like, oh my gosh, how did I get there? How did I let myself get to that point? That That's gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'll, I will have those thoughts and, and being fully I transparent, guess. like yeah. that's, that's awful. I can't believe I was at that point at one point in my life, but I have to move on and be like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not there now. This is where I'm at now. I'm happy. I feel good. I have energy. I feel healthy about my body. I'm excited about the things I'm pursuing and that I'm trying to accomplish. And so the, it is, it can be really, really conflicting at times because I don't want to dwell on the past. Absolutely. I've, I've changed so drastically and that, and you asked why I started content. That was because so many people who knew me back then saw the transformation and asked, how did you do it basically? And so I felt like I was, I was inspirational in some ways. Again, I don't have a perfect body and I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all my shit together, but I felt like I was able to make a significant physical transformation. And if that can help anybody, then I'm happy to help them because I know how much it affected me mentally, emotionally, and physically. It wasn't just a physical transformation. It was such an evolution of, of a person in general for me. And if I can help any single person achieve that same evolution and that big transformation emotionally, physically, and mentally, then I would love to help share that because I gained so much from it and it was so hard and I can, I can commiserate with people because I was there. So going to the before and afters and being comfortable to share that, I feel like we have to have some kind of vulnerability to show people, no, I, I, I didn't always look like this again. I'm not perfect, but I didn't always look like this. I was 215 pounds. I had four kids, a newborn baby. I was exhausted, had no energy, and I felt disgusting. And I hated how I looked. I hated how I felt. I hated shopping for clothes. I can relate to all of that. So I don't want people to see me and think, and people will come up to me in the gym and they're like, you've always worked out. You look so great. I'm like, I wasn't always like this. <laughs> this has this was a journey. This was a three-year journey journey of a lot of hard work, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of support from loved ones. And it wasn't always, I was this at one point. I can relate to the exhausted mom who's breastfeeding and doesn't feel like her body is her own or who just has always been overweight in their life and they hate trying on new clothes and it's uncomfortable for them. Or I can relate to the, the newbie at the gym who is just starting to weight lift and doesn't really know what they're doing. I can relate to that person. I can relate to them because I was there. I didn't know what I was doing and I felt like an idiot and I didn't know how to change my diet and how to change and start working out, but I can relate to that person. So that that's why I create the content and why I share the before and afters is because I want people to know that you can relate. I can relate to that. I can relate to those feelings. I can relate to that feeling of inadequacy and and that evolution of going to the gym and weightlifting and trying to transform your your whole lifestyle and how hard that is. Because I I will go on and look at these fitness influencers who have always worked out and they've always weightlifted and and I can't really relate to that because I didn't until three years ago start weightlifting and so. 
that was why I created my Instagram account. And I wanted, I felt like sharing that vulnerability of all the befores, which is hard because I don't want to dwell on that past. I'm not that person anymore. And I don't want to focus, hyper-focus on that. But I also feel like people have to know you can go from that to this. There can be a transformation. There can be a huge change. You can lose the weight. You can feel confident in your body. And you can achieve something that you may think is not possible. I love it. Kendra, can you explain your fitness guide? My fitness guide? Like the one that I offer on my Instagram profile? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one is is kind of the basics. That is a basic free downloadable guide of where to start with weightlifting and with your nutrition because they are they do have to go hand in hand. And for me, I had to start incremental, make small changes, but they do have to go hand in hand. You can't out train a bad diet. I'm a big believer in that. <laughs> that if I'm still drinking Dr. Pepper every day, it's not gonna define my muscles as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I got that. So that the guide is the basic start to that of where to start with your weightlifting and what to focus on and what to prioritize. And same with nutrition and and they are everything subjective that's the hard thing is and i felt like i was trying to find um oh if this worked for that person it will work for me and that doesn't it's not always the same that's why personal trainers are so helpful and personal nutritionists are so helpful because they can tailor things to your individual needs and lifestyle and your body mm -hmm. but this is a general guide of how to get started where to start, what to look for, what to focus on, lifting heavy, eating clean whole foods, trying to have this healthy balance in life of if you're just overwhelmed, because that's where most people are when they're first starting their fitness journey is where do I start? And this is that starting point for people. Oh, I love it. Do you have, do you have an example about like something healthy? So, like a healthy meal that I like to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for dinners, I do a lot of chicken. My husband and I will grill chicken on Sunday to hold throughout the week. And so I have a lot of grilled chicken and vegetables that night. I remember a um, friend who is a nutritionist. She's a registered dietitian. She said in America, we focus on really heavy dinners and we sure. we overload with carbs at night. She's like, but nighttime isn't when we need need all that fuel in that yeah. energy and that was a big like turning point for me as well is oh you're right like a lot of people will skip breakfast and they'll eat a light salad for lunch and then have a big heavy american dinner because that's that's our social time that's our social hour that's when we eat dinner we love our our steak and potatoes and breads and pastas like that and that's comfort food for me that's my that's my meal. <laughs> it's like you get me hungry steak, right now, girl. Steak and baked potatoes and rolls. Like that was my Mother's Day dinner. <laughs> so that's, like, that's my jam. That's me right too. Now. I could never be a vegetarian. So I like, <laughs> <laughs> and not in Texas. We love our barbecue way too much. So oh my god. <laughs> oh, trust me. I know. I know something about like, Texas. If, if there's brisket on the table, that is the first thing I'm going for. Is some good brisket. Oh, stop it! Stop it! You get me hungry. <laughs> Yeah, let me go wind this down right quick. Uh, but it's one thing I, I, I do want to ask you, like the kickboxing. Uh -huh. Okay, you know it's good for cardio, uh, and you said right, you recommend this for as a good form of cardio. So, and also you recommend this for like self defense as well. Absolutely, I feel like it covers all the boxes. It is self defense. It is anger management because you're literally punching and kicking things <laughs> and then it's also a cardio so it's it's great it's made me love fight nights my husband always loved watching fight nights ufc and and now i can like pick out the technique and i can analyze the uppercuts and the combos and everything and i love it i love it now i love fight night and so i feel like it's one of those things that is i didn't know and i never thought i would be qualified to to be able to do kickboxing but i love it it is absolutely we have a free bag at my gym 
and I'll just go on it. And all these men will come up to me and like, I am never going to attack you because you look like you could kick my ass. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I could. <laughs> so I, I'm like, well, thanks for like not wanting to attack me. That's nice. But <laughs> oh at the same time, I do feel like I can like defend myself if I needed to. It's it's very rewarding. It's very therapeutic. I highly recommend it. I love it. I love that. I love that. That's awesome right there. I know it's something else before I, before I get into my favorite part of my show, my little game for you. Uh-huh. I missed something here because I wanted to ask you. Shit. Uh, oh, one last thing. Explain to me 80% nutrition and diet for body transformation. Okay, sure. So 80% nutrition. What I recommend with that is eating 80% whole foods. So if you have a plate of food and there's 10 items on the food, you want eight of them to be whole foods, meaning they are not processed. There's nothing added to them. And then 20%, two of those things on that plate of 10 is can be processed. So an example of that would be like eating chicken breast with fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, and then having some ranch on the side to dip the vegetables in. So that that's been a general rule of thumb for me. And that I swear by it it has been a huge game changer in my health and nutrition of eating whole foods, clean, unprocessed whole foods is what will change your body drastically because they're whole foods, they're not processed. We as human beings, altered the foods that were put here on this earth to make them taste better because they do they do taste better when they have added sugar to them and extra fat to them but when we are focusing on the whole food nutrition Mm -hmm. it's less for our bodies to break down and digest because they're not as complex they're whole they're just clean pure foods and that has been a huge huge game changer for me physically but also like Just feeling my gut health improve when I'm eating clean whole foods is drastic and significantly different than when I'm eating more processed foods. I can feel it. I have less energy. I feel heavier. I feel a little bit more weighed down just just because your body's trying to break it down and digest this unnatural food. But when we're eating whole clean foods, it is refreshing and it's empowering and I feel healthier and I feel lighter and my body adjusts to that like I do feel like we are what we eat and our bodies will adjust to it they will get more accustomed to that so whenever I eat something that is really sugary and processed now it is it's hard for my body to digest and I just feel sluggish I don't feel as light and healthy so so trying to focus on those whole foods 80 percent of it and 20 percent can be like certain oils even my oils though i I keep to like avocado oil or extra virgin olive oil so trying to keep saying that the avocado oil everybody's saying that you know i i don't feel like there's a huge difference in taste so for me i'm like if it's a clean whole food i'll take that over like my is it the Pam spray? I use the avocado oil spray and it's it's great. I I saute my zucchini in it and it's delicious. <laughs> so, I can't eat zucchini. I don't know what it is. Oh, really? I'm oh, a I really vegetable guy it. and I should be. That's hard then. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I always say, I'll eat a little broccoli, a little yeah. pop. What if you put like in? spinach in a protein shake and you blend it all up? That's how I get my husband to eat vegetables is I have to blend it all up for him uh-huh. in a protein shake. <laughs> <laughs> nasty. Oh, just try it, Lou. You might like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kendra, we're gonna have a little fun now. Okay, I'm ready. I explained it earlier to you. It is my 15 question pick and choose random game. Okay, I'm ready. You can do it. You I'm can kind of nervous, it. but I, I will try and be on my firing squad here and be okay. ready. Matter of fact, what is your favorite game? My favorite game? Oh, mm-hmm. Clue. The board game that's of Clue. Favorite? Okay, that's not one of the questions. Mm-hmm. I just want to ask you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, <sorry>. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start the clock. Here okay. we go. If you can be only one age for the rest of your life, what age would that be? I can't choose that. No. I'm uh, tw- uh, 30. Okay. 
Fruits sure. or vegetables? Fruits. Outdoor dining or indoor dining? Outdoor. Morning workout or evening workout? Morning. Time machine or magic wand? Magic wand. Mm. Roller coaster or bumper cars? Roller coaster. Tire swing or hammock? Hammock. Favorite cheat meal? Oh, ice cream. <laughs> Attending a party or hosting a party? Hosting a party. Okay. Christmas gift or birthday gift? Christmas. Mm. Leg day or bicep workout? Bicep workout. I hate leg day. <laughs> Cooking or takeout? Uh, takeout. Photos or videos? Videos. Calling or texting? Uh, texting. Squats or lunges? Oh, squats. Oh my God. Man. If I have Kill to, God. if I have to do either one, <laughs> I feel like I was faster than you were. <laughs> oh, exactly. Oh my God. You killed that one. Oh my goodness. Man, oh, thank you. you. I am more decisive than I thought. That's good. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Well, well, not the first question though, about the no. age. Thing. Oh no, no, I can't. I no, I can't change that. I, I like change. I like evolution. I like growing and learning. There's no way I could like stay at one age the rest of my life. No. No. Oh God. I would. I would be 50. I'm 52 now. Oh, why? Two year difference. That's not even I love it. It's just something about the whole era of 50. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why I chose 30. Maybe because you have a little bit more figured out. I don't know. Maybe it's oh, just I trust me. Kendra, it's been a journey. Trust me. <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure it out because you know. See, that's us. the thing. We're always learning. We're always evolving and always changing. I couldn't well, be stuck. Some of us men take a little bit longer to grow up. <laughs> that's <know>? true. <laughs> that is true. You no, know, it takes us a little bit longer. You know how it is when we get sick, we're, we're, we're dying. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like, ah, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kendra, I'm going to give you the last message. So I want you to give a message to women out there. Wait a minute, Dad. Who has kids who says, Oh, I don't have time, or this and that. I have two kids or three kids or whatever. Give them an expiring message to you, to them, to take us out. Okay. I feel like when we prioritize ourselves and our physical health, it affects our mental health and it affects our emotional health. And all three of those things allow us to be better people for the people around us and the ones who are important in our lives. It's not selfish, it is not self-centered or greedy to take care of ourselves. It is actually allowing us to be better for other people. And so having that as a priority allows you to better fulfill the other roles in your life, whether that's at work or at home or just in general life, we're able to be better, stronger, healthier people when we actually take care of ourselves and prioritize ourselves. And we're fully capable of doing that. We're capable of a lot more than we may think we are. Ladies and gentlemen, she is truly an inspiration. <laughs> I tell you right now, a mother of four, a wife holding it down, working, uh, te teaching Chinese, uh, I'm sorry, English? Not, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, English. <laughs> uh, you know, I think probably her blood is probably half Dr. Pepper right now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I do remember there was an interview of a hundred year old woman who said they asked her, how have you lived this long? She said a Dr. Pepper a day. <laughs> You heard it, ladies I'll, and gentlemen. I'll find the article for you. That's you my twenty percent of unprocess of processed food is Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Kendra, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you I for having me. I appreciate your time. You've been a wonderful guest. You give so much outlook to everything. I mean, good information. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. For much. Coming on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate all the changes that you're making in the world, especially in so social media. We need more real authentic people like you so thank you for doing this that's awesome hear that ladies and gentlemen okay <laughs>
Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning up, continuing this great episode. I will see you next week on Let's Talk About It. Peace. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the show. Please subscribe, click on the bio, support the show. Thank you so much again. We'll see you next week for another amazing episode on Let's Talk About It.